Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. This is my top five Fairly Brothers movies. The Bobby and Peter Fairly brother duo, directing duo. Uh, I've been looking for a reason to go back and not only rewatch some of the classic Fairly Brothers, uh, but to go and force myself to watch some of the movies that they've come out since hitting the downslide, I would say. Very interesting career by the way, as well, for these two brothers. Started off insanely strong in 1994, coming out with Dumb and Dumber. From 94 to 2000, let me pull this up real quick. They did Dumb and Dumber, Kingpin, There's Something About Mary, and then Me, Myself, and Irene came out in the year 2000. Not to spoil the the list or the order of the list. Obviously, those things may not match up to that release schedule. But let me say, I mean, there's movies past those that that they've done that that I like as well. But that is a pretty epic start to a comedic film career in in movies, uh, comedy films. Uh, Whether the movies hold up or not, that's another question. But at the time... They were batting at a thousand, I would say. Uh, In my opinion, the 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 downfall came after me, myself and Irene. But, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's interesting. And it was interesting to go back. It was interesting to see some of the movies of theirs that I had not seen. Uh, I mean, they started off doing just kind of the raunchy comedy, uh, very immature comedy which is perfect for somebody who was at the time 13 years old when dumb and dumber came out uh up through high school uh with those that that slate of movies those four films uh which is the perfect wheelhouse for a adolescent kid for a a uh a neanderthal as i was um then they got into like some romantic comedy, kind of went back and forth, still doing some raunchy stuff here and there. And then they come out with a Green Book, a dramatic film, out of nowhere, having only ever do- done comedy, whether it be raunchy comedy or romantic comedies, come out with Green Book and made... The best picture of that year, whether you agree with it or not, the Fairley Brothers won best picture for the Green Book. Uh, I watched that movie in theaters, and I was very impressed with these directors who have only ever done comedies, and not like deep comedies. These aren't like high-level comedies. They're they're not like, uh, you know... They're not real think pieces, the comedies that they're doing. To come out with a dramatic film that's not only not horrible, but good enough to be nominated and win Best Picture. I don't think it was Best Picture. Uh, It's not like uh, the best movie that's ever been made. Um, It's not my favorite of theirs. We'll see if it even gets on the list. But it is an interesting kind of progression through their career. Uh, And I guess they're coming out with another movie, The Greatest Beer Run Ever, uh, which is categorized on IMDb as being, oh, it doesn't say. I read it somewhere that it was uh, another dramatic film. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen, uh, but uh, wouldn't be surprised if they followed up Green Book with another dramatic film since it did win them best picture which if you were to tell me in the late 90s early 2000s that the Farrelly brothers were going to direct an academy award best picture i would have said you're insane and i probably would still say you're insane if you said that today and i had seen that movie not knowing that it won because i don't think it's a best picture but regardless i'm not here to talk smack about the Farrelly Brothers. I am here to 
rank my top five Fairley brothers. Uh, and they've worked with some epic talent. Obviously, Jim Carrey. Like, if, if an actor were to be the thing that elevated what would have been some bad comedies, Jim Carrey took those movies in Dumb and Dumber, Me, Myself, and Irene, and elevated those movies to another level. Same thing with Ben Stiller. I think Ben Stiller and Jim Carrey are probably the two comedians they worked with that elevated the comedies. Uh, but enough of that. Let's get into my top five Fairly Brother movies. Starting off with number five, this is a movie. It's actually very crazy, this list, <laughs> before I actually get into it. Because, uh, in my opinion, there are some, f there are four of these five films are stone cold classics, in my opinion, which you 100% have to take into account when these movies came out, what I grew up watching, not necessarily how they would hold up today, despite the fact that I did rewatch them, but I cannot get past my nostalgic connection to these films. However, the fact that I did watch these movies as a 41-year-old, it did change my ordering. If I had made this list in the early 2000s, it, it would probably be a different order. But that said, uh, I could see different versions of myself being angry at this list that I'm about to, to tell everybody right now. But I'm doing it anyway, because that is the show, and I'm doing the show, and if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't be doing the show, and what, what's the point? So starting off, with number five, with all of that said, like, I just, I, I have this feeling where it's like, I feel bad at the fact that people might be angry at my number five because there are people i'm sure would put this at number one but coming in at number five is the first ever fairly brothers movie dumb and dumber it is a classic don't get me wrong don't get me wrong jim carrey amazing obviously um jeff daniels amazing the story whatever it is the quintessential movie about dumb people it makes dumb people funny in a way that most movies that come out today that use stupidity as funny don't understand and they don't understand that you need to have contrast so many movies today will put dumb people as characters and all of the characters are dumb. What Dumb and Dumber does is it gives you two of the just most ridiculously dumb characters in Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels, uh, Lloyd, and Harry. Over-the-top, cartoonishly stupid people. But mean well. And it contrasts them with kind of just normal people. To really accentuate that versus a lot of movies are lazy and they'll just be like, oh, we have dumb people. So that's good enough. Like everybody's kind of dumb. There's a lot of movies like that. And it's kind of a bummer. Uh, but Dumb and Dumber, a classic, a movie as I rewatched it this time, like it, it's a movie. I, I don't have to watch it. It could have been a decade. It may have been a decade since I last watched D Dumb and Dumber. But I have seen it so much in my life. That every line I knew, I didn't know how I know, but I knew it. I was saying the lines just before the characters were saying them. Uh, it doesn't necessarily hold up. There are aspects of the story that's kind of stupid. But I do, you know, I did love this movie. Obviously, it's my number five. It is on the top five. It is a Stone Cold classic. It is crazy that this is their first movie that they came out with Dumb and Dumber, and it I don't know how it did in theaters. I can't imagine this did anything in a movie theater. It had to have been 100% VHS rentals in 1994 for this movie. Um, but it's so much fun. <laughs> it's just so much fun. There was a lot of ridiculous comedies in those years. Uh, and as a 13-year-old, it was, I, I mean... It's just so good. It's so good. Uh, so many lines. Uh, I could quote them all. 
Um, and part of me is mad at myself that Dumb and Dumber is number five. But this is where we are. This is where I'm at. I, I rewatched these movies specifically because I didn't know how I was going to rank them. Because so many of them are deeply ingrained in me because I've watched them so many times. They have provided me with so much laughter and joy in my life. Uh, having to rank them is just was difficult, but I rewatched them. And sadly, Dumb and Dumber. And there will be a movie coming up on this list that is the reason why Dumb and Dumber is number five and not higher. And I'm, it's a, a situation that I'm like, it blows my mind. My own brain explodes at the fact that I ranked these movies the way I did. But that's just who I am in 2022 as a 41 year old. So, number five. Dumb and Dumber. Moving on to my number four favorite Fairly Brothers film. This is a movie that has uh, one of the great comedic actors. I guess two comedic, I don't know. But it's a movie that uh, that made me think about uh, the Amish in a different way. It's a movie that made me think about bowling in a different way. It's a movie that is so much like uh, The Hustler or The Color of Money. Uh, it's a movie that's not quite as ridiculous and dumb as Dumb and Dumber, but still a great movie that is by far as ridiculous and, and proposes many ridiculous things. Uh, and that movie is, of course, Kingpin. Uh, this is the, the, their second movie. They came out with came out two years later, 1996, uh, starring Woody Harrelson, who I don't think of as a comedic actor, but he was definitely caught the comic relief in Cheers. Cheers, the TV show, was a comedy, uh, but I just don't think of Woody Harrelson as a, a, a comedic actor necessarily. Uh, obviously, Bill Murray is one of the great uh, comedic actors, plays a bad guy in this movie, not, uh, and he's not like a major character. He's, I mean, he's a major character, but he's not in the majority of this movie. Majority of this movie is Woody Harrelson and Randy Quaid. Randy Clay, Quaid playing uh, Ishmael, who is a, um, I keep wanting to say Mormon, he's a Amish person uh, who... Roy Munson, Woody Harrelson's character, discovers bowling just from hearing the pins fall. Uh, and just like the premise of like Roy Munson is going to be this like great famous bowler uh, is hilarious. There are a lot of spoof kind of references in this movie that the Fairly Brothers movies, I don't feel, do a lot. Um, but because I've seen all the movies or a lot of the movies that they reference, whether it's Indecent Proposal, Color of Money, or uh, I'm sure there's other ones that I'm blanking on right now. Um, so much fun. And, of course, you have similar actors like uh, uh, Lynn Shay, who plays the landlady. She's, she's got bit parts in a lot of Fairly Brothers movies. Uh, but a lot of fun. A better story, I would say, a more fun story than Dumb and Dumber. It goes on a bit more of a ride, despite, I don't know if it's as funny. I think the comedy of it is a little bit lower than Dumb and Dumber, but the story is a little bit better. So I appreciated that more. That's why I put it over Dumb and Dumber. But I love Kingpin. I think it's great. Uh, and that's why it's here at number four. Kingpin at number four. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Now you can wear the many faces. Original art by Ray Taylor. Select pieces from the ongoing series of abstract ink paintings. All products made with high quality materials made right here in the USA. Go to inspiredisorder.com slash TMF merch to browse the entire collection and save yourself an extra 10% when you check out by using coupon code RTS. TMF. So once again, go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF merch and save 10% when you use coupon code RTSTMF. And now back to our show. Moving on to my third favorite Fairly Brothers movie. Uh, this is a movie that 
I watched, uh, I think for the first time I rented it. I don't think I don't know if I watched it in theaters. I think I rented it and watched it with my best friend and our girlfriends who are best friends with each other. And we all got together, we rented this movie, and we watched it, and it was hilarious. It was a movie that even though I obviously had known about the Fairley brothers, Kingpin and Dumb and Dumber had been out already, this was the next film in line with that. Like, they just kept getting better, in my opinion. This is also my introduction, as far as I can remember, to Ben Stiller, uh, to Cameron Diaz. That movie, coming in at number three, is There's Something About Mary. Uh, just a movie about a bunch of toxic dudes who are obsessed with this woman named Mary. They all fall desperately in love with her and do everything to manipulate the situations in order for her to get to to fall in love with them. A ridiculous premise so over the top you have the you got to release a bullet, you know, get the bullets out of the chamber before you go on the date. Is that hair gel bit hilarious? You have the interludes between scenes with the two band, the guys playing the music to connect all the scenes uh you have a cameo from Bet- brett Favre, which is hilarious um a romantic comedy their first romantic comedy i would say where ben stiller actually has some humanity to him towards the end where he contacts brett Favre, uh to kind of clear the slate um and and you know bring justice to brett's name um you have the frank and beans i mean you want to talk about l- l- laughing my ass off the the scene where he accidentally zips his junk up just before prom is hilarious H- just painful don't get me wrong because you see it Kind of, you see it bulging out of the zipper, and it's like every dude has n- known the feeling of just the teeth of a zipper scraping, pinching any of that area down there. To so to accidentally get the zipper all the way, it's just hilarious, hilarious. A classic on almost every single. This could be my number one. Probably should be my number two, but it's not my number two. It is my number three, and it is hilarious. I think the reason why I put it at number three is because there's very small aspects of it that are problematic, you know, as far as, like, stocky kind of uh, things, like, that are played for jokes that are kind of watching it now are like, but I still I can't get past the fact that I love this movie. So it, it's coming at number three. The whole leaving the dog in the full body cast on the, the roof. Um, I'm sure there's so many other bits in this in this movie that uh, that are so great. Just Cameron Diaz in general is like her sense of humor in this movie. I think she plays well off of uh, Ben Stiller in a lot of ways. Um, and it's just I don't know. She's great in this movie anyway. Um, So coming in at number three is There's Something About Mary. And the musical part at the end of the movie is fun, too. Moving on to my number two. This is a movie that was not on my list. It's a movie I had seen once and have only ever seen it one more time, and that was in preparation for this list. And by the end of watching this movie, I had... I had it, I think I had it at number five at first, or maybe number four. But after thinking about it, as a 41-year-old human being, seeing a Farrelly brother for only the second time, and when I saw it the first time, it was only a few years ago. And to still find a comedy that is made by the Farrelly brothers uh, funny, 
in a way that I don't need nostalgia to kind of help with the fact that maybe it doesn't really hold up or it's not really my type of humor anymore. Uh, but this movie coming in at number two is a comedy, but it's it's a movie that also changes the tone of their comedies. And out of their attempts at, at doing movies of this tone, I think they nailed it, and they did it in a way that I, you don't really see in this type of a comedy. Uh, so coming in at number two is the 2005 Fever Pitch romantic comedy. Uh, Heartbreak Kid was another romantic comedy of theirs that I, I kind of liked aspects of it, but it was still, it went a little bit too hard in the goofiness. Like, vibe-wise, I think it was trying to do too much. It was trying to be kind of, it still had their foot in, like, the super ridiculousness of their, their comedies while also trying to be a romantic comedy. And ultimately, I didn't like that movie. Like, I, I didn't like aspects of that movie more more than I liked aspects of it. So that's why that one's not anywhere on the list. But spoilers for number one. But Fever Pitch, one romantic comedy through and through. You have Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon, kind of the perfect Fairly Brother romantic comedy lead. Because he's goofy and sweet, but not in a way that is like a Jim Carrey. Like, he's able to put, pull off goofy and sweet in the perfect vibe that fits with romantic comedy. You have Drew Barrymore, who is a sweetheart, is, I think, probably perfect in a lot of romantic comedies. Um, she, the love triangle is not between two men and a woman like so many love triangles in romantic comedies are or two women and a man i think it's usually two men and women it is the love triangle between drew barrymore jimmy fallon and the boston red sox and ben who plays is played by jimmy fallon his love for the boston red sox and through the romantic comedy lens of it does all of the great romantic comedy stuff where it's like the tension between the two loves uh the the kind of having to compromise in some ways in order to make the relationship work um she is also having to compromise her love for work so they're both kind of having to give up different aspects of themselves to be with each other. Um, and then the way it ends, I just, I really, after watching this movie, just felt so good. And also it's kind of, in, in a small way, a sports movie because it involves the Boston Red Sox. It involves... Historically, the Boston Red Sox shaking off the curse of the Bambino, which I don't really care about, but I understand that it is a major thing within the sports world. And this movie in, it like took place at a very historical time where they were able to finally shake it off and they were able to actually implement that into the movie itself. Which, like, the reality of the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series added to this love story. Um, and added to the movie. Which I think is, you know, despite that being coincidental, accidental, that they were finally able to win during the production of this film or just after the production. I think they added stuff in after and filmed stuff after. But... The, the the coincidence of that, the serendipity of that, also fits into the mythos of the romantic comedy itself. So all of those reasons, it's a fun romantic comedy, it's a straight-up romantic comedy. This is not like, a ch like cheesy goofballness, really. 
that most Fairly Brothers are, so tonally it's different for them. Not as tonally different as Green Book is, but still, within the comedy landscape, it is a straight-up romantic comedy. But it is one of my favorite romantic comedies. So because of that, it's at number two. A movie that wasn't going to be on the list until I rewatched it, initially was low on the list because of the stone-cold classics they put out, but in reconsideration as a 41-year-old adult, how these movies affected me today, I put Fever Pitch at number two. I will let everybody collectively clean up their gray matter as their brains exploded and my ability to talk goes out the window, uh, like that dog in There's Something About Mary. Number two, Fever Pitch. Join Inspired Disorder Plus today. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus to join. Membership includes members-only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor Show completely ad-free, as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspired Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. Moving on to my favorite Fairly Brothers movie. This movie is will forever be my favorite. Uh, I, f- I feels like it holds up. There might be aspects of it that don't, but I don't... In re-watching it, like, I just... It's another one that I remember everything. I've seen it all uh, a bunch of times. Um, it's hilarious. It is 100% elevated by the lead of the movie no other actor could have done this role and pulled off other than jim carrey and that movie is me myself and irene my favorite fairly brother movie uh came out in the year 2000 i was working at a movie theater at that time uh so i got to see this movie for free i probably watched this movie a ton of times in the theater i remember laughing so hard in the movie theater, watching this movie with my friends, just like when you see th- his kids grown up, how his kids interact with him is hilarious. Uh, the transitions that Jim Carrey does going from Hank to uh, Charlie are amazing. The physical humor that, that and physical acting, physical abilities Jim Carrey is able to pull off with just his face is amazing. You have the welcome to the dollhouse style drum break transitions where Charlie turns into uh, Hank. Our great Renee Zellweger, Bridget Jones herself, plays a badass, I would say, in Irene. Um, I love this movie. It is the best, like, I would say, if, if the Fairley Brothers had an authentic style, an authentic voice... It would be their early movies. It would be that ridiculous, dumb and dumber, kingpin, there's something about Mary, me, myself, and Irene vibe. That is like, if I hear Fairly Brothers, that is what I think. I assume that vibe, that tone of a film. Now, they've done other things that I don't think fit that tone, and I don't think they do that well, Green Book being one of them. Um, I think they were able to pull off Fever Pitch, which is kind of crazy. But when I think Fairly Brothers, I think wacky, ridiculous, immature, inappropriate, raunchy humor. And I think this is their masterpiece in that vibe. Uh, And I think it never would have happened if it was any other actor other than Jim Carrey. There is no other actor who has ever existed who could have pulled off this part. And made it as good as it is. Uh, Just so good. From the narration to the just all the actors playing a Rhode Island police officer. His sons 
uh, how his sons became to be his sons. I'd like every aspect of this movie is great. The transitions, who he becomes as Hank, and the constant battle between the two of them. It is amazing. It is one of the best Jim Carrey roles. It is one of the funniest films. I love it. And it is, in a small way, kind of a romantic comedy. In a small way. Not really. I wouldn't call it a romantic comedy, but there is some of that in this movie. Uh, and Renee Zellweger is kind of an actress that has done a lot of romantic comedy. So it, it fits. But she's not like... Her character in this is so much different than Bridget Jones and other characters she's done. Um, but yeah, I, uh, it is. it was my number one just thinking about it and then in revisiting it after watching all the other ones it's like yeah this is it just even like the scene where jim carrey's like has cotton mouth and his face kind of implodes on itself because of how like it makes me feel like i have cotton mouth watching it how funny it is it is hilarious so much hilarious physical comedy the nose breaking, all of this is so funny, top to bottom, masterpiece of comedy, in my opinion. I think it holds up. So that's my list. One more time. This is my top five Fairly Brothers movies. Starting off with number five is Dumb and Dumber. Number four is Kingpin. Number three is There's Something About Mary. Number two is Fever Pitch. And my number one favorite Fairly Brothers film of all time is Me, Myself, and Irene. Let me know how you would rank your favorite Fairly Brothers films in the comments. Hit me up on social media. I would love to know. Uh, in watching these movies, uh, Hall Pass was whatever. Stuck on You was horrible. I think that was a, a, a very failed attempt. I don't think those actors in any way could pull off the style of comedy that that uh, the Fairley brothers do it that their their style really relies on great comedic performances and uh, Greg Kinnear and, and Matt Damon not the best comedic actors in my opinion um, the the three musketeers the three uh, the three Stooges I literally could I tried to watch it twice couldn't do it it was just so bad. Um, Green Book was okay, but it's not like uh, it's not like a classic in any way. Um, let's see if there's any other ones that I missed here, real quick. Uh, movie Forty Three. There were some parts of that movie that I thought harkened back to that classic Fairly Brothers, but as a whole, I didn't like it quite enough. Uh, the Dumb and Dumber Two did not like. Um, the Ringer didn't get included because it was just a production credit. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that's it. Fever Pitch stuck on you. Uh, Shallow Hal, I hated. Osmosis Jones, I d did not like either. Like, there are some movies where if, like, they m miss, they miss, in my opinion. Um, and they have some major misses. But Stone Cold Classics, in my opinion is my top five. Uh, so that's it. Enjoy. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today, Today is the, the day, day where, you where you wake, wake up and you realize, realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.